So unless you're living under a rock, then I'm sure by now you've heard that Kanye West will indeed be running for president, and he made his announcement on July 4th. So um, there's a lot to say about that, but I'm not going to get into that in this video because I think that that deserves its own separate segment. But what I do want to talk about with regard to the Kanye story is the response to Kanye West's announcement, namely from actress Deborah Messing. And in fact, I'm not entirely sure that she's an actress. She might she might be a singer or both, maybe. Either way, it doesn't matter. Her response was, um, it was problematic to say the least. So in response to Kanye West's announcement, she tweeted out, he's playing Jill Stein. He's trying to take young black voters from Joe Biden. It's disgusting. Yeah, that's going to be a big yikes from me. What's disgusting is this tweet. Because what is the implication of this tweet? It's insulting it's demeaning and quite frankly, it's racist because the implication is that young black voters are so stupid that the minute a black rapper announces that he's going to run for president, those votes that were otherwise owed to Joe Biden are just going to go directly to Kanye West. But Kanye West has black fans and white fans. So why is it that she's not necessarily worried about the white fans voting for Kanye West? Well, it's because she thinks that black voters are too stupid to think for themselves, at least that's the subtext here. So what she's saying is unacceptable, right? It's racist. Why would you also assume that just because he's a rapper, young black voters would be inclined to support him, even if they don't know what his policy positions are? But I mean, anything that I've heard from Kanye West with regard to political rhetoric, I mean, he would probably appeal more to older white evangelicals. So I hate what she's saying here because it really over oversimplifies politics and it's just intellectually lazy. It'd be as if Pete Buttigieg announced that he's running for president under some third party run. And she'd be mad because all of the LGBTQ plus voters will all of a sudden gravitate towards uh, Pete Buttigieg. When, you know, for me, as someone from the LGBTQ community, I would find that deeply insulting because we're more complex than that. We actually value substance. And obviously the same is true for young black voters. So for her to say this, I mean, it's just a bad take. And obviously, she was called out for it. So Nina Turner responded saying, You just can't stop dipping, can you, Deborah Messing? Your connotation is racist. One, black voters are not owned by anyone. Our vote should be earned every election cycle. Two, we can think for ourselves and don't need your help. Three, sometimes it's best to stay out of family business. Teslin Figaro tweeted, Deborah Messing assumes black voters will vote for Kanye West because he is black. Shakes my head. The level of disrespect is high with this one. To which Killer Mike responded, saying to that, she thinks we are trained dogs, sis. And Nina Turner shared a quote from an author, um, which really speaks to a bigger issue here. There's this double standard because when it comes to white swing voters, you see at least the last two Democratic Party nominees craft their entire platform around appealing to those people, but they make no effort to reach out to black voters, right? Or the left in general. But when we're talking about black voters, you know, they don't have to meet black voters and earn their votes. Black voters have to follow through and be there for, for the politicians, which is never acceptable. So this is the quote from the author Candy J, shared by Nina Turner, which reads, while white swing voters are largely treated like political free agents who must be persuaded to vote for candidates they like, Ibram Candy discerns on the Atlantic that people of color and young people are treated like political cattle who must be whipped into shape to turn out for candidates they often don't like. Candidates and campaigns routinely change their profile to better attract the white swing voters but people of color and young people usually find that the change has come at their expense. As Candy astutely sees it, young black voters are encouraged to vote, while white swing voters are encouraged to vote for candidates. Now, Nina Turner responded to this quote, saying, This right here hits the nail on the head. We must reject the notion that black voters or voters of color owe folks a vote. Our votes must be earned. Are we free agents or not? Inquiring minds want to know. And that's exactly right. Now, Deborah Messing is the exact kind of liberal who probably has read Robin D'Angelo's White Fragility, and if she has indeed read that book, like I'm assuming she has, most liberals have, um, then what is one of the core points of that book? I mean, the title is White Fragility. It's getting white people to not instinctively overreact and be insulted when somebody points out their racism, and rather than trying to, you know, uh, be defensive and say, no, I'm not being racist, what you should do is listen to voices from people of color and try to learn and grow from their experience and let them educate you. Uh, but what does Deborah Messing do in response? 
she doubled down and she made matters exponentially worse for herself because she responded to all of the backlash saying, Oh, please, Nina, Kanye is an avowed Trump supporter. Trump's numbers have plummeted. Trump doubles down on his racist platform at Mount Rushmore, and 100 days before election, Kanye is going to announce now? I thought you were smarter than that, Nina. Clearly, it is an attempt to help Trump. Biden swept the African-American vote in the South. Kanye has millions of young African-American fans. It's not racist to say that Kanye can take Biden-leaning voters from him. It's numbers, statistics. If you want to use this to grab your spotlight, by all means, if you really care about the African-American community having their vote counted, I'll have Stacey Abrams call you when I speak with her this week. So hold on, let's just reverse for a moment. Deborah Messing just said, I'm going to have Stacey Abrams scold you and educate you on this issue. Are you serious? Are you serious? Oh my God, the audacity of Deborah Messing, someone with an estimated net worth of $25 million, trying to rich splain and white splain the issue of black voters to Nina Turner, one of the most influential black leaders in America. I mean, the gall on her. This is what money does to you, right? You surround yourself with yes men and they never tell you that some of your ideas are stupid. Uh, so you just think that everyone should listen to you and when they don't, this is what we see. We see your entitled attitude come out full blast. So in response to that, Brianna Joy Gray tweeted, Deborah Messing says she'll have Stacey Abrams call Nina Turner to explain the African-American community to her. And as Dr. Victoria Dooley brilliantly put it, Deborah thinks Stacey Abrams is the manager of black voters. <laughs> Bye, Karen. That is actually a very Karen thing to do. Um, what she's saying here is honestly, it's baffling. The fact that she can't see why black people perceive her statement to be insulting. I mean, I don't know what to say. You're just dense. You are just dense if you can't see the issue. Um, and to make matters worse, you threaten to bring in your black friend to uh, uphold your shitty point, which is a bad point that you should just let go. Like, take the L, sit down. Uh, but, you know, I'm going to let Nina Turner handle this because I don't have to respond. Nina Turner said everything that needs to be said about this. And I don't like to use this particular word because it's not 2016 anymore. But Nina Turner straight up destroyed <laughs> Deborah Messing. She wrote, Deborah, Deborah, Deborah Messing. So you go from bad to worse. The leader of the Karen coalition strikes again. Although it is customary for the Karens to call the manager on black folk, how dare you attempt to create public conflict between two black women leaders in the public space? Not only is it disrespectful to Stacey Abrams and me, it is disrespectful to our black foremothers who sacrificed so we could have a voice in the first damn place. Your attempt to use Stacey as if black women have not been used enough over the last 400 years as the black manager friend card proves my original point, which is black people are not a monolith. You questioning my intellect is one of the oldest smears in the book. Black people have faced this stereotype since the inception of this country. It is racist to continue insisting that black people, seasoned or young, will vote for Kanye West solely because he is black. In case you didn't realize it, Kanye has white and black fans, yet you continue to insult black voters. Further, since you are into numbers and statistics, over 40% of young black voters prefer progressive policies over popularity. My original reply to you was not about Kanye and his intentions to run for president, but about you minimizing black people's power at the polls. Lastly, don't you ever fix your mouth to question my love for my people. I have been a black woman all my life. And finally, she ends with a gif of her saying, hello, somebody. Yeah, that deserves a slow clap. Nina Turner is a national treasure and we don't deserve her. And I will fight anybody who threatens Nina Turner. I love her. And as Tim Black put it, Deborah should create a new account because Nina just killed this one. Hashtag flatline. And, you know, that's exactly what happened. She came up with a bad take. She doubled down. She got demolished. And that's the end of the story. Nope, we're not done because she kept digging, believe it or not. Let me repeat that. She kept digging and she tripled down. <laughs> she tweeted out, Oh, Nina, Nina, Nina Turner, your historical bitterness that Bernie lost the primary by 4 million votes has skewed your reading comprehension. I said the Kanye stunt was trying to help Trump, whose numbers with African-American voters are abysmal. Fact, not racism. By using his fame to take young African-American votes away from Biden, whose numbers with African-American Southern voters were astronomical. Another fact. Sorry, I know they're inconvenient. I never said that black voters were a monolith. That's your narrative. 
narrative. I said Kanye would pull votes because he has fans, period. Black and white, obviously, but in case you don't know, Trump does well with white people. So why would a rabid Trump fan like Kanye run for president against his buddy? Hmm, let's think. Sorry, Nina, I'm not going to stand by and let you write a narrative that doesn't exist. I'm incensed that you would suggest that I am trying to divide two black women. You accused me of having no respect for black voters. It is laughable. I reference Stacey, who is an inspired leader whose governorship was stolen through voter suppression and is spearheading an effort to ensure African American people aren't disenfranchised. Would I be following slash supporting slash led by Stacey if I was this racist minimizer you slanderously paint me to be? The answer is obviously no. It's laughable. Let me just pause. She's literally using the I have a black friend card. <laughs> wow. Nina, there are so much more important things going on that I'm going to now focus on. I am not interested in supporting this bit of drama you have constructed. Just a reminder, Trump is a white supremacist who is doing nothing as we reach 130,000 deaths by COVID, 40 million unemployed, and has done nothing to protect our soldiers from being assassinated for 100k by Putin, to name a few catastrophes coming out of this administration. I sure hope you have learned from 2016 and will put our country and the safety of her most marginalized first this time. So you're explaining all of this to Nina Turner as if she doesn't know the threat that Trump poses. And notice how she's kind of walking back her original statement. Oh, I never said that just the black voters would fall for uh, Kanye West and vote for him. Except what was that tweet again? She says, and I quote, he's playing Jill Stein. He's trying to take young black voters from Biden. We saw the tweet. You don't get to do revisionist history when we can literally go back a couple of days on your timeline and see what you wrote. So, I mean, it's ridiculous, but Nina Turner, again, had a brilliant response. She stated, Now I'm a bitter black woman who can't comprehend Deborah Messing. You are well out of your depth, baby. You need to read this moment, but you can't even do that. Stop using other people to cover for your ineptness. Repeat after me. I, Deborah Messing, am a racist and I need help. I use my white privilege and stereotypes as attributes for black women I don't agree with. For black women I like, I use the black friend card and demand that they go check another black woman. Moreover, I don't respect the agency of black people, which is why I am very comfortable ascribing my beliefs onto black people, especially if they do not act accordingly. I am that white liberal that Congresswoman Shirley Chisholm, Malcolm X, and Reverend Dr. Martin Luther King warned about, and the sad part is I don't even know it. My lack of awareness is linked to my white privilege and neoliberal cloak. Confession is so good for the soul. Now, don't you feel better? You are like most neoliberals who believe the status quo is okay and that all the suffering in the world started in 2016. You lack the courage to deal with the fact that black people, poor people, working class people, and other marginalized groups were catching hell well before 2016. You prefer conformity and illusion over righteous critique and substance. You are dazzled by a type of politics that celebrates being better than Trump without understanding how critically dangerous and low that bar is. You are, as Frederick Douglass described, among those who profess to favor freedom and yet depreciate agitation are men who want crops without plowing up the ground. Know this, you are messing with the wrong one because I am that one in 10,000. Now, because she got checked once again, and quite frankly embarrassed by Nina Turner, she didn't directly respond to Nina Turner, but instead she passive-aggressively retweeted people who were shitting on Nina Turner. For example, she retweeted um, this from a lady named Rita, and it says, you cannot reason with Nina Turner. She is toxic Bernie. As in 16, she'd rather see Trump win than anyone but Bernie win. She'll play the race card if you try to reason. Thank you, though, for trying. You speak for many. So understand that by retweeting that, she's kind of telling on herself. And, you know, since she lost this argument spectacularly, all she can do is say, well, you know what, Nina, you must like Donald Trump. No, the point that Nina was trying to make went straight over your head because you got too defensive to see what she is trying to tell you. You made an idiotic point. Just apologize and move on. Like, you didn't have to double down. You didn't have to make matters worse by threatening to bring your black friend to correct another black woman. Like, you didn't have to do this, but you took it there and you embarrassed yourself and rather than just, like, taking a seat and taking the L... You chose to continue this. So now you don't get to cry and play the victim. You're worth $25 million. You're going to be okay no matter who wins, right? Uh, but what you should do if you actually are the liberal 
that you say you are is actually try to listen to people with a different perspective than you and not shut them down, not rich explain to them what politics is because politics to you, a multimillionaire, is very different than the politics of someone like Nina Turner who actually has lived through struggle. So this was just embarrassing, but I really don't need to say much more because I think that Nina Turner uh, said everything that uh, needed to be said here. Uh, that is incredibly embarrassing for uh, Deborah Messing. And will she take the L in uh, future uh, bad tags? Probably not, but at least, you know, we can make fun of her, I guess. So there's that. Um, yikes. Beta male, not a beta male.